5 verse 21. Our online viewers, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. We are here and the Lord is here to bless you. Amen. Join us. You can keep on sharing this. Like it. Give it a thumbs up. And let this become a blessing not only to you but to other people as well. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Are you there? We are going to read verse 20 and 21. I'm, I'm going to read. You are going to read with me. Three, go. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. Verse 21, three together. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Let me read for you verse 20 from the Amplified Version. The Bible says, So we are Christ's ambassadors, God's, God making his appeal as it were through us. We, representatives of God, we beg people to come back to God's divine favor to be reconciled back to God. Verse 21, for the King James Version says, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk to us about the obstacles to our rest. The obstacles to our rest. Amen. This year, 2023, is our year of rest. And uh, the Lord expects us to rest so that we can receive what he has given to us, what he has promised us. Whenever we hear the word rest, it means there is unrest. This year, there's going to be unrest. I don't know whether you're, you're, you're getting what I'm talking about. Every time you hear the Lord talk about giving you rest, it means there's going to be unrest in the nation. And therefore, he is speaking of giving you rest even in the midst of the unrest. These are some of the signs to know people who really need rest and to know how to rest and be safe. Number one, denied access. Many people, for a few years, you have been living a life of denied access. If you feel or you are sensing in your spirit man, you are living a life that looks like you have been denied access. It doesn't matter which area of your life you have been denied access. You need rest. The more you fight, the more you remain unrest. You need rest. You need rest. Therefore, if you have been denied access, you need rest. Hallelujah. Number two, constant life of struggle. Constant life of struggle. If you have been living constant life of struggle, every year, every month, you never rest. You are ever struggling. You need to enter rest. Number three, re reduced or no passion and love for God. If you realize that sometimes the love for God like you had is no longer there, you no longer feel like praying, even coming to church is like a struggle, it's like a burden. Even for those watching online, even just to tuning in, to sit down and settle and listen to the word of God is like a struggle. You feel like you have reduced the passion and the desire either to serve God or to do what is needed. Or you used to come to church very earlier, but lately, umeanza kupunguza. You used to come regularly. Nowadays, you can even come once in a month. It means you really need the rest of the Lord. The desire and the passion need to be restarted again. Number four, lack of provision. 
where the struggle and lack of provision it means there's no rest because the bible says in philippians 4 19 that i shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory therefore in christ jesus we have been given rest where you don't see rest roundabout it means you are living with no provision number five and answered prayers there are people who have been praying and praying and praying and praying but sometimes you realize that even what you have been praying for or whatever you've been praying for you're not receiving an answer to any of it you need to understand what's happening here number five number six chronic sickness and diseases you have been struggling with certain kind of ailments for so long ailment for so long and disease and sicknesses Therefore, you need the rest of the Lord so that you can rest from pain. There are people who sleep not because they want to rest till morning, but they sleep to escape the pain in their bodies. Number seven, life of stagnation that comes along with the complaint. Where you were last year is where you are this year same salary same place no promotion no moving no breakthrough you need the rest of the lord number eight head for life itself have you ever felt you hate your life and you feel like you don't you no longer need to live again there are people who reach to that level they enter depression and some even commit suicide because they even hate the life they are living in. I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe I'm talking to somebody here. You feel like you have reached the end of you, that you hate your life, you hate everything about you, you blame God for everything, you tell your mother you gave birth to me, Surayangu Nimbaya, you could have looked for another, maybe handsome man, so that Nikai Vizuri, you hate your own life. The rest is coming. Number nine, spiritual absence there are people even when people are happy and joyful they are singing and rejoicing the presence of god is present they never feel it you feel like god is at a distance there are life principles that control and dictate the affairs of a man there are life principles that dictate and control the affairs of a man we all understand i've been speaking to you about grace for a very long time i wanted the concept of grace which is god's goodness to the undeserving people to enter and rest into your spirit so that when i start explaining these things to you this year you will understand where i was coming from because so far i know you understand you live survive by the grace of god is that true you know you are who you are by the grace of God. You know it's not by your strength that you, what, you are who you are. You know you have not paid anything else to receive what you have today. The Bible has said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter from chapter, uh, chapter 5 from verse 2. The Bible has said that we are Christ's ambassadors. Making, sorry, God has made us to be instruments to be used or for him to work through us. Now listen to this. For God to do anything on this earth today, he has made you an instrument to be used of him. You didn't get what I said. There are no angels converting into human beings to come and do anything to you or to anyone today. Anything, anytime God wants to do anything, He is counting on you and He is making you His instrument, His ambassador of His affairs. We all know. An ambassador does not take care of his own life, but the country he represents takes care of him. I'm preaching alone here. Amen. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? We know 
There's no ambassador who travels to another country to survive on his own affair or with his own money. The house you live in as an ambassador, the car you drive, the expenses you use in a hotel, the security you have, they are being taken care of by the country you are representing. And one thing you need to understand about being an ambassador, when you are an ambassador, whatever word you speak and declare while you are at the embassy, hey, it is considered as the nation you are representing is speaking. You didn't get what I said. If the ambassador of America speaks today, the newspaper will say, America has spoken. America has said. The Bible says we are the ambassador, his ambassador, and that representative. What an honor and a privilege to be called by the king of kings that you are an ambassador here on earth to represent not your normal country, to represent a kingdom where you are coming from. You are only here by, as a passersby, but there's a kingdom we are come, where you are coming from. I am an ambassador. Listen to me. If I know I am an ambassador from heaven, I've not been told that after my time is over, I'll be recalled back. I'm not being recalled back. I'm not being retrenched. I'm not being transferred. I am an ambassador from heaven. That means wherever I go, the kingdom of God is being represented. Whatever I do, the kingdom has been represented. Whenever I arrive, the kingdom has already arrived. Whatsoever I speak, my nationality, where I come from, my president, my king, has simply declared exactly the way it is. Even if an ambassador speaks of something by mistake, without consulting the country where he's coming from. Do you know what's going to happen? They are going to look for a means to justify that statement to make it true. Very few people are getting me now. A time is coming as family. You will speak and declare things even unconsciously without knowing. And the heavens will look down upon the children and they declare I know he says something that is not what we have been doing he spoke of a culture we don't understand he spoke of a language we never sent him to say but he has already made a press conference it has already been heard from the quarters and because he said even if he never consulted us let us work out to make sure we are in agreement of the same do you know how many angels are waiting to back up, to back you up, to partner with you, to fulfill God's agenda on earth? Amen. So the Lord has said, you are his ambassador and through you, he wants to work here on earth. The same way, if you are not an ambassador of Christ, you are an ambassador of Mr. Satan. You know Satan? Satan. The Greek word for Satan is Satan. Satan. <laughs> It's not because of their accent. Satan is the Greek language, is a Greek word for Satan, meaning an accuser, an accuser, mushtaki. The work of Satan is to accuse. Are you there now? Now, the Bible has said, he has made, God has made you an ambassador. Can I see how many ambassadors in the house? When an ambassador is demanding for budget, for his affairs, thank you. He does not beg anymore his nation. He says, things in this country have escalated. So I need my budget to be increased. And whatever money he gives, they say, it's well sorted. This year, I'm telling God that the life he had given to me, the budget has increased. And uh, I need it sorted out. Amen. And you know, the good thing is that when you speak, for you to come it's coming from you, they send you the air ticket to go and sign another release of finance there. So in the realm of the spirit, soon and very soon, I'll be signing things. The Lord has given you an open check to sign that which you want. 
as a child of God. I want, to, I want you to stop looking at yourself as a mosquito, as a cockroach, as a grasshopper, as a chicken, as a sparrow, and look at yourself as, as a, just as Jesus is to God, so you are to him. Uh, the Bible has said, for God made Christ who never sinned. Christ never sinned. But what did God do? He made him sin, our sin. God made Jesus our sin so that we who were sinners might become the righteous of God. Righteous means right standing. When God looks at me, he sees Jesus standing before him. It's because I am the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. In other words, today I'm here to declare to you that God has exchanged your life with that of Jesus Christ. So Jesus became sin. That's why he suffered. That's why he underwent through what he went through. That's why he could not survive well. And he became sin so that you who are a sinner can become the righteousness of God. I'm here to announce to you, no matter how many sin, how much sin you committed, upon you receiving Jesus Christ, you are counted righteous as though you never ever committed. You are made mweupe kama pamba. Some who have some mindset that thinks if I say I'm a sinner is humility. Oh Baba, mimi ni mwenye dhambi tu. Mimi ni kitubure, ni samehe. Mimi ni matope tu, mikono ni mwako. You were matope before, but after you were creation, the creation, you became Adam. We will see. Hasa mungu alikutoa kwa matope, unaendea kujita matope, unajita we bure. Wano Israeli wakaenda inchi ya kanani kupeleleza inchi. When they came back, they told Moses, hey! Iyo inji na kula wenyeji. Tulijiona kama panze, ndivyo walivyo tuona. Nobody saw them that way, but they saw themselves that way. How are you seeing yourself from today? If you are a young man and you are here, I want to let you know, you are not a grasshopper. You are not a product of the failure of your parents. You may have come from a poor background or a humble family, from a place that we can never give a testimony. You cannot change that story because that's where you are coming from. But I'm here to make announcement, to make a declaration. The fact that I came from a place of loneliness, of lowly place, it doesn't mean I belong there. I have the power and the ability. I can change my tomorrow. I can change my future. I can change where I am going. I am not what I was. I am not what my parents were. I am not what my mommy was. I am not what my daddy is. Your daddy may be struggling to take you to school. I want you to understand he is struggling so that you can never suffer again. You will enjoy the life of Christ. He is paying the price that you no longer need to pay the price again. I'm not taking my son to school to buy me a car. I have a car already. I'm not taking my child to school to buy me a land. I have it already. I'm taking him to school to have a better life for himself. It's a price I'm paying for them. The Bible declares and says, a good parent, he leaves an inheritance to his children and to his children's children. It's a price we are paying. I'm here to let every child of God understand. As a spiritual father, there are some times I pray, even when you are enjoying and having fun, not because I don't know how to enjoy, but I'm making sure that whatever I went through, whatever spiritual struggle I underwent through, Whatever spiritual dryness I have been through, whatever spiritual lack and deficit I have been through, my spiritual sons and daughters will never have to go through the same. I am here to send as an oracle into your life that whatsoever I went through, you have been exempted because a price has been paid already and I have allowed Jesus Christ to exchange his life with mine. Whatsoever price he paid, I will never pay it again. Say Yes. Now, the principles of life 
they dictate how we run the affairs of life. Life has got principles. Like we have the principle of nature. The principle of nature is whereby things are happening the way God created them. For example, today, the principle of nature, some can call it the law of nature. If you jump from a tree, the Bible declares in the book of Psalms 91, and also Satan spoke of the same in the book of Matthew chapter 4. He told Satan that he jumped from this building, the Lord will send his angels to rescue you, that you will not fall and hurt yourself. But it is, this is the principle of life. Listen, if you dare jump from a tall building to the ground, you will fall. Even if you fall while speaking in tongues, you will fall down. You will be broken. It's the principle of life. If you don't eat, for a week, you will die. Utakufa. Na hapo ndiyo sasa ukienda huko bwanesa atakuza na umekuja nini. Nambia Jehovah, unajua yeso likase kwa rubaine bila kukule chakula. Na mimi nimeona ni kaya. Nambia dili kuambia. Ujinga di umekuleta hapo, utapeleko huko. You will die. So there are principles of life. Are we there? Are we there? The principles of life still stands. We can never change them. I know Jesus walked on water. I know Peter also walked on water. Are we in agreement? But the principles of life, unless you're practicing faith, remember I've not arrived on practicing faith. I'm still on normal life. If you dare go to the lake in Mombasa, or lake, uh, to the ocean in Mombasa, or Lake Victoria. Alafu useme mimi am the seed of Abraham. Na Yesu alitembea juu ya maji, Peter katembea juu ya maji na uanze tutakuokota maiti. You will die. It's the principle of whether umeokoka ama hujaokoka, you will die. Are we together? If you live reckless life, utapata magonjwa. Na hata kama unaongea kwa lugha utakufa. Ah ah I'm teaching you the principles of life right. Are you there? Number two, we have... Sorry. After the principle of nature, we have the principle of life. The principle of life works effective as well. If you are mean to people, people will be mean to you. If you are jealous, people will desert you. If you are wicked, you will be the prayer point of people. Do you know what it means by becoming a prayer point to people? When you become wicked, every time you end up you you are our prayer point. We are there rebuking you. The principle of life. The principle of life, Galatians 6-7, has an answer there. Galatians 6-7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, he shall also do what? Rip. Kile mwanadamu anapanda, anavuna. Under the new covenant of grace, we don't give to receive. Are we in agreement up to there? It's not about our effort or our work that we give so that we can receive. Are we in agreement there? Yes. Huh? Yes. You're not with me. We don't give to receive because we don't trade with God. Is that okay? Yes. But if you give, you will still receive. You didn't, you didn't get me now. Our giving is not compelled to we give because we want to receive. Our giving is compelled by the love we have for our God. Are you there now? And because we love him, we give out of love, out of the love we have for God. The principle of Galatians 6-7, it comes back to us. Our motive is not giving to receive. 
our motive is giving because we love God. But even as we give because we love God, we shall receive because when we sow, we harvest. So our actions are motivated by our love for God, but we still receive the results. If you give to receive, you will give, you will not receive. If you give because you love, you will receive. Amen. That is the principle of life. We have spiritual principles. We have what? The life of the spirit controls the life of the physical. You can never become somebody in the field until you become spiritual. That's why John 1 verse 12, the Bible says, them that received him, he gave them the power to become. When God gives you the power to become, he has enabled you to enter the realm of the spirit. Therefore, you can become who you are supposed to be or who you want to be in the realm of the spirit. And the same will reflect even in the spiritual. When you receive Christ, he has given you the power to become a child of God, to become a winner, to become a conqueror, to become healthy, to become rich, to become wealthy, to become blessed, to become healthy. He has given you the power to become because when you become, you declare the same thing you have become in the spiritual into the physical. And as it manifests, that's exactly who you are. Can I hear you? Someone preach with me. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, we call the principle the laws of Moses. The reason why we call them the law of Moses is because they were given by Moses. They existed before the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The law demands and demands and demands of your effort. The law looks at how good you can do for you to become, for you to receive, for you to be given something. It's about how much you can pray, how much you can fast, how much you can sow. So the law is on demand, it's demanding, but the grace of God is in readiness to supply. It supplies and supplies and supplies and supplies without caring. Why? Because the grace of God understands. It is the goodness of God that is done to you that compels you to do the remaining after you have received. In other words, your action or activities under grace are supposed to be the products, products of what you receive. Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In short, you can never give love until you have received love. When you receive love, out of the abundance of the love you have, you can give to other people. Are we there? In the Old Testament, Jesus said, remember, Jesus did not preach from the New Testament. Jesus preached from the Old Testament. Another name for the Old Testament is Scripture. <laughs> I'm teaching you new things today. Eh? Jesus preached from the Old Testament. He was revealing himself as he was recorded from the Old Testament. Because by the time Jesus was still alive, had not been written. The New Testament existed after the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died, buried, and resurrected, the Holy Spirit introduced the new covenant, which is about the grace of God and the life of Christ. So the life of Christ is revealed to us in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the law of Moses was bringing death and punishment. But in the New Testament, under the grace, Jesus is bringing life 
and life and more abundantly. Are we there now? So in the Old Testament, Jesus said, Jesus said, forgive people their sins so that your heavenly father can also forgive you. So the condition for your forgiveness was based on what? You forgiving fast. Are you there? That is the Old Testament. Jesus said, forgive people their sins so that your heavenly father can also forgive you. But when it comes to the grace of God, here Paul is saying, people, just as you have been forgiven, you do forgive. So you are not forgiving to be forgiven. You are forgiving because you have been forgiven already. Amen. Now, the Lord demands, but grace supplies. There's one danger here. When the mind of a man is under slavery, every truth is considered a lie and an enemy. When the mind of a man is in slavery, every truth is considered a lie and an enemy. They will always look for means to justify the lie. Let me say this. Being common and popular doesn't make it right. Being common and popular doesn't make it right. Being said by people with big, big title doesn't make it a truth. Are you there now? Like there's some lies I want us to damage today. The concept of the blood. Say the blood. Say the blood. Watch and kunya magic ones and you give you. What is the purpose of the blood? Where did the blood come from? What is blood? Blood is not the red liquid available in the bloodstream, in the vein of a man. Hey, 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 Alphonse. Kuna indaje? Blood is the life of the owner of blood actively involved in your affair or in your well-being or alive. When the life of Christ is actively involved in our affairs, then the blood of Jesus is actively available and involved. For a very long time, the gospel fathers lied to the church. They told you, they told us, we use the blood <laughs> to cast out demons. The blood to protect us the blood so that's why every day when we pray i want you to we, we we always do that. but let me let me tell you i thank god because i'm still growing the day i'll grow i tell you i've grown i'm still growing amen we tell people invoke the blood speak the blood declare the protection of the blood speak the blood for protection let me tell you today after this revelation I thought that God is trying to play around with my mind. I God, what are you saying? I went throughout the Bible, the Holy Bible. There is no place the blood of Jesus is protecting man from Satan. Actually, the blood protects man from God. Yeah? Wow. What is that? I say that on the radio, and immediately after a few three minutes, we saw the Twitter handle of the media station trending up. What is Pastor Makanda saying? It's true. The purpose of the blood was to protect man from God, not from the devil. Okay. Can I explain to you? Okay. We see. 
in the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 13 the Lord says the Lord goes through the land to kill the firstborns of the Egyptians but whenever he sees the blood he will pass over the Israelites decide to paint their doorposts with the blood are you there now you can read your Bible and the angel of the Lord was passing by and any door why was the angel of the Lord passing by what was the angel of the Lord doing in, in Egypt the Lord wanted to kill all the firstborns in the land of Egypt in agreement up to there are we there so the Lord was killing all the firstborns in Egypt but the, the door of the farm had blood on their door the Lord did what he passed over in other words the blood that was upon the doorpost it protected the family from God's destruction ah. are you getting that now whenever the blood is present it is preserving you from destruction because remember the devil has no power over you satan has no power over you demons has no power over you when a man sinned god's law god's decree god's standard he had to kill every sinner if you sin you die if you sin you die and therefore the blood came as a remedy to protect you from being killed by god after you sin okay let me continue some people are still thinking about it. You'll get it, don't worry. Amen. In the Old Testament, God used to move inside the Ark of the Covenant. You understand that, right? So the presence of God was inside the Ark of the Covenant. Are we together up to there? And in the Ark of the Covenant, it had got three things. I've taught you several here. It had the manna, the food the Israelites were eating in the jungle. It had the rod or the staff of Aaron, which was kept under the Ark, the meeting tent. It produced flowers and it produced what? It produced the fruits. Inside the Ark of the Covenant, we also had the, the two tablets of the law now what does it mean these three things were kept inside the ark of the covenant and because they were inside the ark of the covenant whenever a man sinned these three things inside the ark of the covenant they judged the man and upon them judging the man god killed the man are you there now now the law the ten commandments symbolizes man's rebellion against god's given law the bread, the manna, which was inside, it symbolizes man's rebellion against God's provision. You remember in the wilderness, God provided for them manna and some food and some quail. But they complained and said they rather go back to Egypt and eat the pumpkins instead of eating the same bread every day in the jungle. So you realize that this bread symbolizes man's rebellion against God's provision. We see the rod of Aaron or the staff of Aaron. It symbolizes man's rebellion against, against God's choice of leadership. They were all complaining. Why is God talking to Moses alone? Why is he just speaking to him alone? But I want you to understand one thing. By the way, listen to this. I want you to know one thing. Moses was just a ruler. Moses was not a priest. That's why in the whole journey, Moses could not bless the Israelites. The only person who was a priest, who was supposed to bless the Israelites, was who? Aaron. Open the... Numbers chapter 6. Number 6. Very fast. Kitab Chesabu Sita. I'll confirm to you everything from the scripture. Number 6. Kitab Chesabu. The book of counting, chapter 6. The book of counting, chapter 6. Verse 22. I read for you. This is what the Bible says. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. So who is being commanded to bless here? Because Aaron was a priest, Moses was not a priest. Moses was only a leader, a ruler. So Moses could not bless the Israelites. Only Aaron and his family were supposed to do so. Are you there now? Some say, oh, unajua Moses alikuwa na kigugumizi, hangeweza kuongea. That is why God gave him Aaron. Actually, God gave Moses Aaron to become a blessing to the Israelites so that he, as a priest, he will be in charge of sacrifices, prayers, and services because Moses knew how to talk very well. Open the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Acts, Matenda Mitume. The book of Action, chapter 7, verse 22. Are you there? You are still opening? You want to confirm? <laughs> the Bible says in the, amplifier, in the New Translation version, let me read it. It says, Moses was taught all the wisdom of the Egyptians and he was powerful in both speech and action. Let me read for you the Amplified. The Amplified said, So Moses was educated in all the wisdom and culture of the Egyptians, and he was mighty, powerful in speech and in deeds. Let me read for you King James Version. If you don't believe it. King James Version says, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and in deeds. What does it mean when Moses was complaining to God, I cannot talk? This is what it means. Immediately, Moses accepted the calling to go and serve God, to go and deliver Egypt. Immediately, he accepted all the human weakness were destroyed. And he became perfect as a normal man. I'm here to challenge every child of God. The moment you decide and you declare, I'm going to serve God with myself, with my body, with my everything. Every weakness that you have been looking down upon yourself because you are not able to do, the Lord will make sure His glory covers your weakness. He glorifies you. He overshadows your weakness. And whenever people will look at you, they'll never see that shy person. They'll never see the stammerer. They'll never see the poor person. They'll never see the ugly one one because in our weakness the grace of God makes us strong if you are weak the Lord is strong in your life can I hear your loudest amen, amen. hallelujah when you become weak for the sake of the kingdom, the Lord will use you. Most of us, you see us preaching today, we were very weak. We never knew how to talk. We were shy. We were useless. We didn't know how to dress, how to present ourselves. But immediately we say, Lord, I am ready to be used of thee. His life and my life was exchanged. My weakness was taken. I don't know who I am talking to today. I'm here to declare in the name of Jesus. There are some people here with your weakness. People have been looking down upon you. People have been despising and disgusting you. People have rejected you because you look like useless. No one wants to join you to team up with you. I came with good news. We serve a God who uses weaker vessels of the earth to ashamed the strong ones. When you are weak, he is strong. Let the weak say they are stronger. Let the poor say they are rich. Let the blind say they can see. Let the cripple say they can walk. Let the poor say they are rich because that's what the Lord has declared to be. Jesus was so rich. He became so poor so that the curse of the law can be broken from your life. Galatians 3 from verse 13. Jesus decided to break the curse of the law. Teaching good, right? Yes. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Now, these three things inside the Ark of the Covenant 
was the reason why men were dying. Whenever you could rebel against the law of God, the Ark of the Covenant had the power to kill you. Whenever you rebel against God's choice of leadership, like the way Miriam and Aaron, and that is why, look at this, Miriam and Aaron, they both talked against Moses. True or false? Who started the conversation? Miriam or Aaron? Huh? Aaron! Because Miriam was not a priest. Aaron was a priest. Meaning, being the priest, he knew the law. He knew it's wrong for Moses to marry from Africa, to marry from Ethiopia. So, Aaron akaandisha masengenyo kwa Musa. Na wakasengenyana na nani, wakakua na nani, sister haki anaitua nani? Miriam. By the way, bro, alifanya ni ujinga. Ana naenda kuwa kutoka Ethiopia. What happened? Bona alienda kuwa huko. Waliongea the two of them. But, when the Lord heard, the Lord asked, Were you not afraid to talk ab about my servant? And what happened? Miriam alipigwa na ukoma. Aaron hakupigwa na ukoma. Why? He was a priest. I want you all to be priests. I want you all to be priests. Let me tell you another thing. When Moses went to the mountain to pray, he took so long before coming down. And the Israelites went to, Mos to Aaron and said, Wait, Musa mekata kurudia meenda kabisa. Fanya hivi. Tengeneza, tutengeneze ndama iturudisha wapi? Misri. Waliambia nani? Aaron. Aaron nakijabu kukata kwa tutakupiga mawe, tutakuhua. Fanya hivyo waraka. Aaron akawambia basileteni mikufu yenu na dhaabu na kila kitu. Waleta. Walipoleta nana alitengeneza hiyo ndama? Aaron. Mungu aliposhuka. Alifungua ardhi akakula watu wengine Aaron akabaki. When you become priests, whatever is affecting other people, you will be exempted. That's why I'm telling you this beauty in serving God. Tukienda tuibe na wewe, wewe utagongwa mimi nitabaki safe. I am a priest. When God looks at me, he says this is my own. Touch not the anointed. He is preserved forever. He is the apple of my eye. He is safe as I am. He is safe. You will not be touched. But sasa wo kienlea kufanya vituko after becoming the priest. Mungu akichoka na wewe. When God was tired with Aaron, do you know what he did? Aliambia Musa, Musa fanya hivi. Chukua Aaron na kijanake Eliaza mkuja kwa mulima. Wakaenda jua mulima. Munga kambia Musa fanya hivi. Toyo vazi, Aaron amevao valisha kijanake. Immediately the garment of priesthood was removed from Aaron. God killed Aaron because he was no longer a priest. Some of you have been preserved because of the little service you are serving God in the house of the Lord. Keep on serving. Let that priesthood garment remain there. Amen. Is it possible you are surviving because of my protection? <laughs> Amen. Because we are here, God is not going to destroy Kenya. He's not going to destroy Rongai. Because we are here and we are priests. I declare you priests. You don't understand. When you become a priest, you have entered the realm of representing others in the supernatural. How can a pastor ta kukeme ana ku ana kuom? When I joke, when I wa ubiru when I penda kulani watu, huh? They just kushika. The pastors who are never prayed for before becoming pastors, he was just a youth evangelist. Katoroka akayenda kafungua kanisa psikwizi ni kanisa. He has never been prayed for or ordained or laid hands on him. So what we naona is a pastor, but in the realm of the spirit, he is still a youth. Spirit realizes and understands realms and levels and ranks. That is why some of them wanapigwa kwa sababu mapepa mbae inachugulikianga wachungaji kikuja kwako. Sumejita pasta. Huh? Sumejita pasta. Kwa hivyo hile mapepa, unajua every new level has its own new devils. You know that? Every new position has its own new oppositions. Every garden of Eden has got what? A snake. So listen. So, wewe, mungu aja kuhita pale, umetoka tu mwenyo ama an apostle. Apostle Joseph. Apostle Joseph. Apostle Joseph. Mungina alinita, daddy, how are you? 
siku hizi niko kitale bwanaesa ametusaidia now this i'm apostaji jina maana mtamjua i'm apostosan so so because this this is a true story nikamwambia eh hey, young man you are now an, an apostle sana yeah you know grace ikikuja lazima tukubali nikam nikamwambia nikamuuliza who made you an apostle nasema i heard the voice and who confirmed the calling nasema the spirit was too much and was talking audible my friend you are on run today as i'm talking to you today as i'm talking to you hata kanisa na endangi anasukuma mkokoteni waposo na kila kitu kiliisha do not the pa- paul anasema do not ignore the consecration of laying on of hands by the elders it's very important it gives you protection and preservation that's why when you argue with the leadership una argue unaona we you are big you are big you are big because you can cast demons una okay kama mimi naendanga wengine wanajua naendanga na nyamaza na kuwa siongelee hiyo kitu tena siku utakutana na ile demon ya aposto sasa inakuja inapigana na maaposto inakuja na kuangalia inapata umejiandika jina aposto nasema let, let, let me try kama ni aposto nagonga kidogo tv acha nijaribu hata gongangi sana acha nijaribu hiyo aposto there's no mantle and you remember position title without a mantle is a struggle and a battle a title without a mantle is a struggle and a battle sasa inakuja inaangalia ulijita aposto sasa wanaambia wanaita wale mademon wengine apostle wale iko in charge apostle come what demons apostle kuja huyu huyu ni client wenu wanaenda kuta- because already we may identify kama apostle wanaenda kwa mwingine wanakuja wanakugonga kamoja kamoja unaamka mpaka unashindwa kuongea unasema haleluya the grace is sufficient the grace is sufficient umewekwa chini hata uongei una hepa Nairobi unadhani ukienda Kisumu penye hawakujui utasimama unaenda kisumu na machachari yako unaanza unaanza kidogo kidogo na kisumu iko na wenyeji na territory zake na wenyeji wa huko nasema bwana kuna mtu mgeni amekuja hapa nani find out the identity nasema nimesikia kijita apostle nasema oh <laughs> jamaa kuyeni memba wenu ndio huyu wanakuja wale aposto wanakugonga unaanguka kisumu unaanguka Nairobi naanguka unaenda meru unaanguka unapigwa kila mahali unaona kama Mungu hafanyi kazi ukiona wale wanaendelea unadhania kwamba wanatumia uchawi ama wanatumia ah, ah you entered a wrong line and the enemy said to, to, to destroy you listen stay on your lane until god sets you forth That's why you will be given some small responsibilities here and there in the church. Just keep on playing those roles effectively and grow. Keep on doing that and grow. Just grow, just grow. Wacha nikwambie, time yako ya kupewa title hata utauliza. It will be evidence to all. Sema hey, tuache huyu afanye kazi because it be given to you. Are you there now? Ah. I don't know why this came where this came in, but it's very important to know remain humble hata kama utakemea mapepo 20 remain humble and keep on serving god and remain loyal to your pastor amen na kuita dorin where are you pasi unajua jana nimealikwa fellowship ingine kule na nyuki na i'm the guest speaker and ujaona posta kwa facebook nilikutumia nilikutaki kwa posta ujaona atulienda wapi wengine wanakuambia ni kama wanakuta wanaku, they are not asking for permission i'm using dorini because mtoto wangu hizi kasirika wengine hapa nikitumia jina lako utakuwa kwa ofisi after service pastor ulisema jina langu hivi <laughs> amen <laughs> any title god has not given to you will kill you achana nayo that's why i'm okay comfortable being called pastor makanda is that title not okay na It's a good title. If you want to be a bishop, I give it to you. If you want an apostle, take it. If you want uh... <laughs> Naziogopa sana hizo title, my friend. Run away from some of them. Being a pastor is okay. Amen. You are safe. You are a shepherd. Neema za wachungaji. Iko juu yako. Unajua mchungaji anazapigwa mateke na kondoo na baada anavumilia tu kuna hiyo neema itakuwa juu yako <laughs> when you become a prophet <laughs> you will see because prophets don't even do counseling 
when you come, they just lay hands. Because now, what are they going to cancel you? What are they going to tell them? And they know what you want to tell them. Amen. Now, what happened is this. During the time of the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant was made using two material. One, the wood, which came from cedar. Two, gold. Are you there now? Are you there? It symbolizes the, the life of human being. You are spiritual and you are physical. You are God and you are human. Are you there now? Jesus was 100% God, 100% human being. So the Ark of the Covenant symbolized what? Jesus. Because the wood symbolizes humanity. But gold that was coated with symbolized divinity. Are we there now? Now the Bible says every year the high priest entered the Holy of Holies. How many times in a year? How many times in a year? Huh? Let's get this. Once. Amen. So the high priest entered the Holy of Holies only once. With what in his hands? With the blood of an animal. Where did this blood come from? This blood, people used to bring animal. You bring a cow, you speak your sins into this cow. After you have spoken, they kill this cow. When they kill the cow, this, the blood of this cow covers your sin for one year. After one year, you expi may expire. So what was happening is this, that the priest, high priest, the holy of holies, once in a year with the blood. So whenever he entered there, he found the Ark of the Covenant covered. The Ark of the Covenant was covered and two angels from both sides, they were standing on top of the cover with their wings protecting and covering the cover of the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolized God preserving or protecting whatever was inside the Ark of the Covenant. Is somebody getting me? Are you getting that? Now, listen to this. Listen to this. When the high priest arrives in the Ark of the Covenant, having a rope on his leg, because if you present yourself to the Ark of the Covenant and you have sinned or the blood you have come along with is not accepted, the Lord will kill you. And even if you are killed, nobody is permitted to enter the Holy of Holies. They will pull you out of the Holy of Holies with the rope that is on your leg. Therefore, the high priest appeared before the Holy o before the, the Ark of the Covenant with the blood and he will sprinkle the blood of the animal on top of the cover of the Ark of the Covenant seven times. How many places was the body of Jesus Christ opened? That blood came out when he was about to die. How many places? How many places? Seven. The face, the head, the beards, the back, the hands, the legs, the back, and the side. Are we there now? So the same way also significantly, the blood was sprinkled seven times on top of the cover of the Ark of the Covenant. What is the name of the cover? I told you before. Kaporeth. Kaporeth means a place of mercy. Now, the purpose of the blood of Jesus on top of the cover was so that when God looks at the Ark of the Covenant, if there's no blood, he will see the sins of the people reflected in the things inside the Ark of the Covenant. Are you there now? So, if the blood is on top of the cover, whenever God looks at the Ark of the Covenant, he can see the blood on top of it. And remember what I told you. Remember what I told you. God can see through anything. But he has purpose never to see through the blood. So, whenever he looks at the Ark of the Covenant, instead of seeing your sins, he sees the blood that has covered your sin. Then you are preserved and protected. Therefore, the blood of the animal protects you from destruction from God because of sin. Are you there now? 
Are you there? Therefore, the blood becomes a remedy to preserve man from being destroyed by God when he sins and not to protect you from Satan because God believes you are above Satan. Therefore, in the new covenant, what are we doing in the new covenant? In the new covenant, the Bible says in the book of Hebrew, in the book of Hebrew, I will, I will speak this and then we end today. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 9, verse 7, the Bible says that only the high priest entered the most holy the blood of the lamb of an animal. But in the new covenant, this is what happened. Jesus Christ, are you there now? I'm about to finish. I want you to be with me. I want you to be on the same page. Are you here now? Are you there? In the new covenant, Jesus Christ did not offer. And remember one thing. No one was permitted to touch the blood except the priest and the high priest. But in the new covenant, we have the chief high priest. Who is the chief high priest? I can't hear you. Who is the chief high priest? Your voice is low. Say it better. Who is the chief high priest? Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Now, in the new covenant, Jesus did not present an animal. Jesus enters himself into the holy of holies. Not with the blood of an animal in his hands. But he goes there with his own blood. He appeared the holy of holies. <laughs> I don't know who I am talking to today. But I know I'm speaking a mystery that will deliver you to eternity. That the power of the enemy will have no power or no effect against you anymore from today. Listen to me, child of God. Jesus appeared the holy of holies with his own blood. Not the blood of an animal. Because Jesus is the chief high priest. He entered there once and for all. And he says, I know you are supposed to be paying every year but after today you no longer need to pay every year Jesus enters the ark of the covenant with his own blood immediately the ark of the covenant it realizes there is a superior blood that has arrived in this place there's a superior blood there's a superior blood are you there now the superior blood arrived in the holy of holies <laughs> and everything had to bow down every nakedness had to be made open every hidden had to be unveiled every darkness had to be lit every shame had to be removed every pain had to be dealt with every suffering had to end and the bible says jesus and with the blood of this, with his own blood, when Jesus arrived, the power of God that was healing people, he said, From today, I shall no longer kill my people, for it is finished. Someone has paid the price, and the Bible declares and says, The curtains of the temple they were torn from the top to the bottom, giving Boniface and James an access to enter the holy of holy. All you saw, not with the blood of an animal, but I'm walking in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, I no longer need to sprinkle the blood of Jesus over my children. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. No wonder some of you, you have been protecting yourself from God. He cannot visit you because this blood, the blood protected man from God. But listen to me. The blood of Jesus Christ gave you access to God. And you got access to God. You become the temple of God of the Holy Ghost. You become the tabernacle of God. Jehovah starts living inside of you. And when God is living inside of you. I'm here to announce uh, where God is. Uh, it's a paradise already. Where God is, uh, it is a heaven. Uh, therefore, no demon can touch you. No evil can touch you. No curse can touch you. For the Bible says, uh, he that is in Christ uh, has become a new creature. The all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new do you still need to sprinkle the blood for the devil someone is asking me but pastor how do we 
process from Satan. Which Satan? The one you created in your mind. And if I told he is there, I have an answer to that as we finish. Can I give the answer to that? Psalms 5 verse 12. This is what protects you from Satan. This is what protects you from Satan, not the blood. Psalms 5 verse 12. Are you there? Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalms 5 verse 12. The Bible says, For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Let me read from King James Version. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. The favor of the Lord has the power and the ability to shield you from every harm of the enemy. Today as we are seated here, the favor of the Lord is resting upon you. And because the favor is on you, you are preserved. You are protected. You are covered. You are surrounded. You are led. You are hidden. Hallelujah! Say yes! So today, we no longer sprinkle the blood. Why? The Bible says in, Re in Leviticus 17, the life of every creature is in the blood. Therefore, when you get born again, we exchange life with Christ. The, the blood of Jesus is in me. Because the blood of Jesus Christ is in me, I have the victory of the Lord. Therefore, the blood of Jesus gives you the power and the ability. I'm here to declare this. None of you 23 will be late to the hospital. None of you 23, 23 will die prematurely. None of you 2023 will, will be killed on the road accidents. You are preserved. You walk in the blood. You function in the blood. You stay in the blood. You live in the blood. You believe in the blood. You sleep in the blood. You no longer need to sprinkle because you don't need to sprinkle. Only the high priest has the power and the ability and the permission to sprinkle. The high priest Jesus has already sprinkled. I am in him. He is in me. He is the vine. I am the branch. He is Jesus. I am a Jesus. I live in me. He live in me. I live in him. His victory is my victory. Any barrenness, the power of life in me. If it's sickness, the Bible says this in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. That if the spirit of the Lord dwells in you, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, he shall vitalize your mortal bodies with strength and life. If the spirit of the Lord dwells in you, he shall give you life. If he was able to raise Jesus from the dead, what about the living body? If Jesus was able to raise a decaying body, oh yeah. He can raise you today. If he was able to raise Lazarus, he shall raise you. Shout hallelujah. Every yoke is broken. Every curse is reversed. Every demonic attack and activities are defeated even before they start. Your children are well and safe. Your family is well and safe. Your business is well and safe. We walk with the strength of the life of the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Son is in me. The blood of conquered is in me. The life of the blood is in me. I do things not because of my strength. Because the life of the blood is in me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The life I have is no longer mine, but the life of Christ. For I am no longer the one living, but Christ living in me. From this moment, the life of Christ is victory. The life of Christ is success. The life of Christ is healthy. The 
the life of Christ is wealthy. The life of Christ is promotion. The life of Christ is excelling in every area of your life. You have been struggling. I've been sent by the Holy Spirit to come and declare to you there's no power of the enemy that will surpass the power of the Lord Jesus to come and attack you. If they cannot kill Jesus again, they can no longer kill you again. If they can no longer defeat Jesus again, they can no longer defeat you again. They kill Jesus once. He lives in me today. You are not just born again to enjoy life. You are born again to reach eternity, enjoying life. So I'm here to prepare you. Wait for the coming of Jesus for the second time. You will be there enjoying life. You enjoyed life here, you will enjoy life there. Abraham enjoyed life here and he was there even with a servant quarter giving to people like Lazarus. The life of eternity begins here. It ends there. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? I want to pray with you today. Amen. We have become what Jesus was. We have become what he came to be. And we have become what he is. First John 4, 17. The Bible says, as Jesus is in heaven, so are we here on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the person next to you. Spiritually. Muambie. Muambie as you are in the realm of the spirit. Muambie heavy. My friend. Muambie my friend. The life of Christ is in me abundantly. The power of the resurrection of Jesus is upon me mightily. Because Jesus overcame, I am overcoming. Because Jesus cannot be defeated, I cannot be defeated. As he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. By the power and the life of the blood of Jesus in me, everywhere I go, I walk in victory. I walk in power. I walk in abundance. I walk in the grace. I walk in full supply. I walk in the provision. I walk in increase. I walk in the abundance of the Lord. I am a child of God. I am born of the Spirit. I am born a winner. I am born great. Winning is my lifestyle. Lift up your hands, everybody. Start praising the Lord with your mouth for exchanging his life with your life, for exchanging your victory with his, for exchanging his power with your power. Oh, you can do it now. You can do it now. You can do it now. You can declare to him, Father, I give you praise. Lord, you exchange your life with me. You became a sinner, but I can be the righteousness of God. You delivered me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Open your mouth and declare. Mwambia, you suffered shame. You suffered embarrassment. You suffered shame. You suffered embarrassment that I can be a better person. I have received the victory of the Lord and the power of the Lord. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I walk in the power of the life of the blood. I walk in the power of the life of the blood. I walk in the power of the life in the blood. Declare you are walking in the power in the life of the blood.
hurry that you are walking in the power of the life of Christ. In the power of the life of Christ that is in you today. Declare that now. I walk in the power of the life of the blood of Jesus in me. I walk in the power of the blood of the life of the blood of Jesus in me. I walk in the power. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Yes. I want you to declare this now. With your hands up in a loud voice, declare this. Say with me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any evil effect in my life or in my body by the power of the life of the blood of Jesus I carry I cast you out of my life I flash you out of my life in the name of Jesus open your mouth open your mouth and flash out anything existing in your life by the power of the life of Christ you carry by the power of the life of Christ you carry what empire come out Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Declare right now. Anything you don't like, cast it out. If you don't like sickness, struggle, pain, diseases, poverty, anything you don't like, cast it out. The power of the life of the blood of Jesus in you will silence, will kill and silence it. For the blood of Jesus speaketh good things than the blood of Abel. Therefore, the power of the blood of Jesus in you, you are declaring life, life and good things. Let the blowing say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see this world the Lord has done. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the blind say I can see. The blind say I can see. This world has done. Let the weak say I am strong. Say I'm rich. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. That's what the Lord has done in me. Let the weak say, speak it louder. Let the poor say I'm rich. Stop. 
I bless you today. I bless you as you come in and as you go out. Amen. I bless the work of your hands. Amen. I bless the fruit of your womb. Amen. I bless the words that proceeded forth from your mouth. Amen. I bless your belief and faith in God. Amen. I bless your finances. Amen. I bless your body and your health. I bless your finances. Amen. I bless your career. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I come against every sickness. I come against every disease. I come against every affliction. I come against every pain. I come against every struggle in health. Every forces of the enemy pressing you down in your life, in your body, in the life of your family members, every type of disease, every type of sickness from wherever they are coming from, diseases from Satan, from madmen, and from everywhere. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cut them out. Live and go. release life in your body every demonic attack orchestrated in the realm of the spirit against you I destroy them today I cast them out of your life out 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 every demon out every curse out every forces of darkness out in the name of Jesus, 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 the power from hell out, 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 struggle out, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life to you today. I break stagnation. I break struggle. I break forces fighting your progress. I break delay. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take your miracle now. Take your healing. Take your wealth. Take your health. Take your peace. Take your joy. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. As an ambassador from heaven, I declare into your life breakthrough in every corner of your life. Now. Breakthroughs, 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 breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, breakthroughs in business, breakthroughs in family, breakthroughs in our church, breakthroughs in our, in our marriages, breakthroughs in our business, breakthroughs in our careers, breakthroughs in our relationships, breakthroughs in our nation. Breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs everywhere. Everywhere breakthroughs. I see testimonies of life. In the name of Jesus, testimonies. 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 I hear the voices of joy. And new songs. New songs in the lips of believers. New songs in your heart. New songs, new songs, new songs, new songs. For whatever need you brought to the Lord today, whatever need you carried to the feet of Jesus today it's already uploaded 
Every yoke is destroyed. Yes. Every burden is removed. Yes. And every yoke yes. is melted. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. There are people receiving new wombs to conceive new wombs. New wombs. New wombs. I declare, thank you, Holy Spirit. There are people signing new contracts. Yes, yes. It's being signed. New contracts, new contracts, new contracts. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There are some promises of promotion. Promises of salary increase. Promises of, store, of settlement that were promised to you. They are being made real now. Being made real. 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 Go and prosper. In the name of Jesus. Go and succeed. Every budget in your life is already catered for. Enjoy the life of Christ in Jesus' name. Give Jesus praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. You know, thank you. When you enter into that testimony, kindly share. Even the ones online, share it. One of our online viewers who was supposed to undergo surgery because he had a problem with the dysfunctional with his lung and he listened to uh, the other not this not last the other one the other service he listened online and he believed uh, he told me he had connected his phone to his computer uh, sorry to his tv and uh, he is in lebanon and while he was watching he just went and touched the screen after that on tuesday when he went for a checkup the doctor said you no longer need an operation because everything is functioning he said that when he come to kenya, he comes from uganda but he said that when he come to kenya, he goes back home this time he will come through nairobi kenya before he goes to uganda of what God is doing. Now, I want to assure you one thing. Each one of you here, you are a carrier of miracle for you and for people. Walk. Walk in the conscious aware. Ningekuwa wewe, kile ningekuwa nikiyomba mu. You don't know what I'm, can I tell you what I'm praying for now? My prayer request right now. Yeah? Naambia mungu, sababisha ile shida kubwa, ile shida maduongu. To appear before me. And make sure you give me the power to solve it. You don't understand. You will know that day. This is what is happening. And the miracle that will take place, they look for you, tell you, I want to see you after work. There are, there are some things, there are some things you don't need people to hear around. And can I shock you today? Listen to me. You don't need friends. You need strangers who do not know you. But they are ready to agree with you and to carry you to where the Lord is taking you. Strangers who are miracle carriers in your life. Amen. Amen. So, so that you know the Lord has spoken. Go from today any, any single miracle you receive. By the way, let me tell you, some people they assume when Angojile Miujiza Ya kuona mtu na mgu moja kitembea, kuona ni mujiza. Some of you have been receiving even miracle money you don't understand. How mtu na kupatia tu. Some of you have been receiving some favors. Am I talking to you? I don't know. Well, I know what I'm talking about. I know. It's a miracle. But some of you 
because you think it's normal, you don't receive it again. For every miracle you consider a God-given miracle and testify, it becomes permanent and daily lifestyle. From today, any miracle you receive, ata kami nakaki dogo, write down, come and testify. The same God who does small miracle is the same God who does big miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Unadani, ningeanza tu kuhubiri vivi alafu ni viwete na vipofu wanaanza kutembea. Labda kiburi kingeni maliza before ni fike penye niko leo. Hasa mungu wakarusu ni gropo la pole. Saa hii hata ni kifufua mtu. Angalina, okay. The Lord has done it. Naenda zamu. Siku hizo ngeambia kila mungu kama. Come and see. So the small miracles you are performing today, you are going through today, they are qualifying you for a bigger miracle. Because everything has got a child. You didn't get it. Everything has a child. Even miracle has children. For every miracle, small miracle in your life, let them reproduce. In the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise in the heart! Meet you at the top in Jesus' name. For online viewers, God bless you. See you again, even as you join us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can have your seats. The presence of the Lord. The lion.